During the presentation of estimates today, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade had the opportunity to present its estimates for this financial year, and we would have focused on a number of key uh, initiatives of the Ministry, both through our Division of Foreign Trade and the Broad Ministry of Foreign Affairs, um, and our developmental objectives for the year. One of the things that we focused on would have been the building of strategic partnerships um, and transforming those relationships which we've tra traditionally enjoyed into new alliances which not only reflect a strengthening of those relationships from the past and those that continue today but the forging of new relationships as we go forward. Um, key among them, of course, is the fact that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs intends to open a new embassy in Ireland. We have already begun the process of reaching out to the Irish government with a view to doing this and the, the funding to facilitate that is located within the estimates of expenditure for the Ministry. Why Ireland? Barbados has since 1620s when we were colonized been forced to be very close to the Irish by virtue of the fact that many Irish would have been um, transplanted here in much the same way as our forefathers were ancestrally. Um, throughout the passage of time that relationship has strengthened and today Ireland and Barbados enjoy a relationship in which Barbados is the home to much investment. Um, for example of course is the Sand Lane property and we are also the home of much of the tourist effort coming out of Ireland. And so therefore, Ireland becomes a very strategic and important commercial partner for Barbados. Above and beyond that, however, is the fact that with Brexit, we saw England leave the European Union. Ireland remains part of the European Union. And therefore, uh, again, strategically, we will have an ally with whom we share some history, we share some investments, um, but it is an English-speaking country and um, there is some familiarity and common, common interest in that regard. Above and beyond that, we've also indicated that we are going to continue the work which we began via the commencement of diplomatic relationships and the establishment of embassies in Ghana, the United Arab Emirates and Kenya um, and that type of work is now to be buttressed by commercial diplomacy efforts in all of these capitals. Why do we want the commercial diplomacy efforts? Because it allows for Barbados to begin to advance the process of transforming our economy and building new platforms for growth and competitiveness. Um, give you the example of the United Arab Emirates. Those Gulf states have specialized for some time in the extraction of oil and gas and the whole world knows that they have achieved considerable expertise in this. Um, obviously as Barbados is beginning its own journey in the oil and gas sector it is important for us to find strategic partners who do this and do it very well and therefore part of the exercise that we are going to be engaging in with the, the Gulf states um, through the embassy we have at the U UAE and through the commercial diplomacy efforts coming out of that embassy will be in that particular sector. Above and beyond that, there's obviously a, a substantial interest um, in the Gulf states for there to be tourism and hospitality opportunities in which they can invest and obviously um, tourism products which they can visit. Um, Barbados remains top of mind for many of these countries around the world, um, again because of the excellence of our tourism and hospitality sector and so therefore coming out of the UAE will also be the opportunity for the inward flow of investment towards our, um, our, our tourism sector and the development of that sector as well as opportunities for us now to build the air bridge between that part of the world and ourselves. Um, above and beyond that, we spent some time today talking about the matter of foreign trade. And that is a very critical matter because obviously Barbados has to maintain its close relationship with CARICOM. CARICOM is the only part of the world with whom we have a, a trade surplus. And so therefore a strong CARICOM works financially for the benefit of Barbados. Specifically, 
60% of our goods and services are traded with CARICOM and therefore it is the home um, of a lot of the, the, the productive effort of this country. Um, how do we deepen that relationship is, some of the, is one of the questions that was posed to us and we looked for example at the relationship which we've begun to forge with Guyana and how we intend to deepen that relationship um, not only with Guyana but also with Suriname especially in the agriculture sector so that Barbados can be the, the point at which food products coming out of Guyana, coming out of Suriname um, are, are treated as a hub for transshipment and at this particular point when once they, it comes to Barbados there will be the opportunity for the packaging of the food, the blast freezing and then of course using our logistical connections to the wider world. We have 26 or more flights leaving Barbados on a weekly basis to go to England, uh, a similar amount going to the United States of America, uh, a little bit fewer going into Canada. And what we would want to do now is to be able to sell directly to the diaspora and obviously to other parts of the world where we have some connectivity and therefore bring a different dimension and some value added to the agriculture effort coming out of this country. Um, we also spoke a little bit about our relationships with the World Trade Organization um, um, and other multilateral institutions, for example, the Organization of American States and the United Nations itself. These institutions are absolutely important because it allows for us to build relationships in a very direct way with countries which are very like-minded and share similar interests to Barbados. Perhaps at the very top of that list is the issue of climate change and the challenge that this country and other small island developing states face with respect to the changing of the climate. Um, we have made the point very clearly in these estimates that um, the interests of Barbados at home are reflected um, in our engagements with the wider world. And we all know that climate is an issue here in Barbados. At least eight of our parishes experienced severe drought during the course of the year. We have seen the evidence of coastal erosion, including on the very important west coast. Um, we know its impact not only on tourism, but perhaps even more profoundly on the communities that have to enjoy and, and use the beaches that we have and the near shore fishing and the damage to the reefs and the concerns go on and on. Um, the international environment at a multilateral level, whether it is the United Nations, whether it is the Organization of American States, wherever we go and that we have a voice in the sea. Part of the conversation that we now have is about climate change and the need for there to be climate justice, a just transition period, um, the opportunity for us to be able to enjoy the space to do the financing that is necessary to transform the state we are in now into a state where we have built out the necessary climate defenses and adapted to the challenges which are coming our way. Um, that is a very costly proposition and a very difficult exercise, um, but the conversations have to be had with like-minded countries who recognize the problems that we are facing and who are willing to partner with us in order to make it easier for the people of Barbados to go through this adaptation process as we must. Um, above and beyond that, we also would have had some engagements on areas of, uh, I suppose, common interest to other ministries. One such area is the area of uh, de-risking and correspondent banking. Now that is really a matter that would normally find its, its location among those people who are connected to the Ministry of Economic Affairs and to finance. But the truth of the matter is that it is a matter that impacts on the lives of all Barbadians because there are Barbadians in every part of this island who know what it is to have a family member overseas who is sending back a little bit of money to help look after granny, help look after the children, help look after some other part of the family. We all know that those remittances need to have a correspondent bank because all of the banks here cannot necessarily easily be connected to Canada or easily connected to the United States or wherever else in the world that we are sourcing money from. From a business perspective, it is equally important because of the fact that if I am going to sell my services or sell my goods overseas, I must be able to, 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 to be paid. 
and therefore people who are going to pay for my product or if I'm going to source the product from overseas, I must be able to have that corresponding banking relationship to partner with the bank that I am using in Barbados or the credit union I'm using in Barbados. We've come to a point in time in the world where it is increasingly difficult now for those relationships to be sustained because of the internationally imposed requirements of, of security of knowing your customer and knowing your customer's customer, all in an effort to fight against money laundering, all in an effort to fight against the, the trafficking of illegal drugs and narcotics and ammunition and so on. And while those are understandable and lofty objectives, the reality is that the consequences of going too far east is that you end up in the West. And so Barbados has to partner now with like-minded countries that recognize the potential damage that can be, gun, be done by the excessive precautions and to find a way where we strike a balance so that we protect against the evils of those people who would want to run drugs, run ammunition, etc., while at the same time making sure that we do not do untold and irreparable damage to industry and to commerce and to family life in this country. Um, in so doing, obviously the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has already been able to point to a success because last year we were able to host the first ever regional conference with the United States Congressional Leadership on finance matters right here in Barbados and we brought a number of leaders of CARICOM to participate in that discussion. And, and we go on at this level, at the multilateral level, to speak truth to power in international fora where the concerns that are common to a wide cross-section of countries and in some cases concerns which are common to the heritage of mankind, for example climate, are discussed. I have here with me um, my acting permanent secretary and my substantive permanent secretary who has been very kind to come off of her vacation to participate in this exercise today and I have also Minister Sandra Husbands who is my minister in the ministry and also the director of trade Kay Sealy and I would want to give them the opportunity to share their views on the discussions that we had today. Barbados is a member of the Organization of African, Caribbean and Pacific States. This body is a body that first came together in response to the relationship with the EU. It made for the convenience of Europe to engage us as one body. Over the years, the ACP recognized that there was more to the relationship than just relating to the EU. Rather, we should be able to use the numbers of our members to enable us to form an organization that could become an international body where we can do advocacy on behalf of our members and the OACP is 77 members strong. What this did was it allowed us to shift somewhat and include in our focus our relationships with each other, the possibilities for trade, possibilities for technical cooperation, the possibilities for advocacy, and this has been a tremendous boom for Barbados because as we've fought on a number of international fronts to deal with issues such as climate change, graduation, and we've dealt with blacklisting, we are now joined by 77 members who pledge to support all of the interests of its members in every forum in which we engage. In the recently held ministerial conference in Angola, for example, they included the Bridgetown Initiative as a part of their declaration and they seek to work with us in order to advance this initiative that was actually created by Barbados. The recently concluded post Cotonou Agreement is also something that has been something to celebrate here in the region as when it was concluded we were able to garner from that experience the 800 million dollars for euros for the Caraforum area, which gives us a carve out from a four billion that was assigned for Latin America and the Caribbean. Now this is significant because small nations like Barbados can get lost in the greater needs that you would find in Latin America. What is important for us now to take advantage of the 800 million is for us to be able to work with each other to develop the types of programs that will advance the needs of our region. 
and as well to work with Latin America to develop those multi-country programs that would assist us again in moving our development forward. So this is the work that the ministry is going to be very much engaged in over the next couple of years, making sure that we participate and gain the benefits that we can from this new relationship in the post Cotonou Agreement. During the course of today's estimates, we had a lot of discussion about the external engagement, Barbados's enhanced external engagement in the world. And what I'd like to mention now is the fact that Barbados is also showing leadership in the metaverse. We will be the first country, or we aim to be the first country, which will open an embassy in the metaverse versus a digital embassy. And what is this going to do? It's going to allow us to show global leadership in the intellectual property area. It's going to allow us to show innovation di diplomacy. We will be using the embassy for the metaverse embassy for investment promotion, promotion of Barbados's key productive sectors. We'll be using it for public diplomacy, for, for showcasing and talking about what it is that Barbados does in the world, our achievements and the benefits that we can be derived from our representation globally. We will use the Metaverse Embassy to advance our commercial diplomacy, um, the, the, the thrust that we have to grow Barbados's exports and goods and services and also to increase inward foreign, foreign direct investment. And we will, another key area is also to advance our diaspora policy, which is a key platform, revised um, platform for engagement with the diaspora community of Barbadian, um, and the ancestors of Barbadians and also Barbadians by choice or friends of Barbados. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Kay Seeley. I am the Director of Foreign Trade in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. And the mandate of the Ministry of Foreign Trade is the development and coordination of Barbados' international trade policy. You would recognize that this policy is a reflection of the trade policies which are in place and implemented at the domestic level. And this trade policy is developed through heavy consultation with the public and private sectors in the country. Now today we would have spent a lot of time discussing strategies for bolstering exports of goods and services. Most importantly, we would have looked at the CARICOM market, which is the major market for exports and imports as it relates to Barbados. So even though CARICOM represents Barbados' major trading partner, we are saddened that intra-regional trade only represents less than 20% of all goods produced in the region. And as such, we discuss some of the strategies which are being implemented through the Council for Trade and Economic Development to increase the opportunities for trade and to improve the regulatory environment for trade within CARICOM. Some of these strategies include the CARICOM Integrated Marketplace and Suspension Procedure, which is a digital platform where businesses in the region can highlight those goods which they produce and offer them for sale across the region. It is important to note that this digital platform is also accessible to persons outside of CARICOM, so it creates opportunities for doing business with the rest of the world as well as with CARICOM. There's also the public procurement portals which are intended to highlight those procurement opportunities in place in every single member state of CARICOM and the onus is on member states to highlight those opportunities so that these can be made readily available to other member states for prosecution. We also have the review of the common external tariff and rules of origin. These were not reviewed for some time now and it's important that we pivot these tools in a way that it seeks to increase trade, investment, innovation, diversification of the range of products which are produced within the region. We also have the Trade in Animal and Animal Products Protocol, which is being finalized, as well as the rules and regulations behind the public procurement regime and mergers and acquisitions. Now, I wish to switch to some of the priorities for the Ministry over the coming year, and we will be frontally addressing 
the identification of additional opportunities and challenges under the trading arrangements to which Barbados, through either CARICOM or CARIFORM, is a party. I will be working steadily with the private sector to identify the types of support which is needed for them to increase the levels of export and production of goods and services in Barbados. Now, in closing, I would like to say that as the Ministry continues its execution of its mandate to advocate and defend commercial interests, seeking out new markets, and actively seeking out development resources, we will continue to work with stakeholders in the public and private sector as we seek to maintain policy space for the government to implement the range of policies which are required to support national development.